Good evening to you all. Good evening to my compatriots, Brazilians. Uh, welcome, all visitors. Um, I hope you have a fantastic time while you're here in Brazil. Uh, but please be careful, because Brazil is a very violent country. Actually, Brazil is the single uh, country in the world. It, it, it's the country where, uh, with the highest uh, number of deaths by, by armed violence. Uh, in fact, uh, in Brazil, you're more likely to be shot to death than in wartime Afghanistan. Uh, this is not uh, a, a trend, just ours. Uh, uh, actually, most of Latin America is incredibly vi violent. As you can see here, uh, this is the table of the uh, highest murder levels in the world. And most of the countries in the top are in Latin America or the Caribbean. Uh, why is it so? This, is, this has not always been the case. Uh, Latin America has not always been such a violent place. It had pretty reasonable levels of violence in the past. Uh, why did it change? It changed in the 80s when Ronald Reagan decided to escalate Richard Nixon's war on drugs. And he started heavily funding um, security forces in Colombia. Uh, in order to end the supply of drugs to the United States. Um, so uh, the thing is that the supply didn't end, and the supply didn't end because the demand never ended. Uh, the, thing, the thing with... Um, sorry about that. The, 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 the supply didn't end because the demand didn't end. Uh, it's so easy to produce and to to process and to hide cocaine. Uh, and it's so ridiculously, so uh, insanely profitable to, to, to do commerce with cocaine that there will always be someone willing to take the risk. There will always be someone willing to, 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 to sell drugs to the United States. Uh, so uh, uh, with, uh, with this riot and repression, what happened is that drug dealers uh, responded with even more violence led at, at the time by the monster Pablo Escobar. Uh, uh, violence skyrocketed in, in Colombia. And but the, the, this business is so ridiculously profitable that uh, there was a surge. What the, the result of, of this rise in repression was a surge uh, in innovation in this business. So the, the cocaine business became very innovative. And what they did is that they created several new routes to take the cocaine north. And these routes started crossing many other countries. And every country that was touched by one of these routes would see a similar surge in violence. So this is how Latin America became such a violent piece of the of the world. This is how Latin America became the most violent piece uh, of land in, in the world. Uh, uh, the war on drugs isn't a metaphor for us here. It isn't a metaphor for Latin Americans. It's a very real war. People are killed. Uh, most of us here don't actually fight this war, but this war is being fought among us. It's be being fought very close to us, and every once in a while it touches our life, and it's always tragic when it happens. This war uh, is hindering our development, it's corrupting our police, it's corrupting our justice and our governments. Uh, it's getting in the way of, of our institutions, it hurt it's hurting our democracy, and it's killing our people. Uh, so we are paying a really, really high price for this war, and we don't actually get much in return for that, as you can see here. Imagine that this little green rectangle is $1 billion. This is how much the Colombian cocaine industry makes in one year, $300 billion. And this is how much stays in Colombia, $7.8 billion, which is like 2.5% of the total. What happens to the rest? All the rest is sent to big banks in the US and Europe, in the, and it merges with, with the legal economy, and it never comes back, it never returns to Latin America. So what I'm saying here is that Latin America is paying a really high price for this war on drugs, and it's not getting anything in, in return. Uh, I traveled to several countries last year, trying to find out if there is any 
more rational way of dealing with this issue uh, in order to write a book. Um, so uh, one good example uh, I found was the example of Portugal, uh, which convinced me that there are lots of better ways to deal with, with this issue. Actually, less violent ways of dealing with this issue not only make all this violence, all this killing unnecessary, but they actually are a lot more effective in helping us dealing with the problems caused by drugs. The Portuguese example is a really good one. Uh, what, Portugal, what Portugal did basically was that they started taking care of people instead of arresting them and killing them. And the, result, the results were so good that both analysts from the right and the left agreed that, that the system is a, an outstanding success. This book is a book written by an, uh, a right-wing organization linked to the Republican Party in the United States. Um, uh, this guy, I, I met this guy just last week. He's a smart guy, a young guy, um, um, a really sad guy. This guy's name is Sebastian Marroquin, but this is not actually his real name. He was born Juan Pablo Escobar. He happens to be the son of Pablo Escobar, the, the monster. Uh, he lives in Argentina. He was 14 years old when his father was killed. He ran away. He, he's been hiding in Argentina in shame for his whole life. He became an architect. And a few years ago, he decided to uh, get out and talk about this. Not only that, he started searching for people who are sons of the people his father had killed. Uh, he met many of them. And he said he was sorry. Uh, this is him meeting the son of a very important conservative Colombian politician. They, they met, they became friends, they cried together, they hugged, and both of them said that they, they, they want the war on drugs to end so that there won't be any other Pablo Escobar in the future. Uh, both of them say they favor uh, ways to regulate the sale of certain drugs so that the financial power of drug dealers in Latin America won't be so big in the future. I think that these people teach us, teach all of us, and teach our, cunt our countries, and teach our, our continent, the Americas, a very important lesson, which is a lesson of reconciliation. Um, uh, I think that all of us must learn uh, with them uh, how to look back to our past, and how to recognize that the, the mistakes and the sins and the errors of our parents. Um, and also, uh, we, we can learn from them how to look to the future and, and try to plan a world, a system for a world where we want our sons and our daughters and our grandsons and granddaughters to live. So uh, the idea I want to share with you is this. Please support reconciliation. Please support the end of the war on drugs. Thank you.